This is Dr. Catherine Collins. I don't know if anyone will ever hear this. It's all over. I'm the only one left. I'm going to continue to broadcast for as long as I am able. If I'm right, you should be able to pick up the signal right across the valley. The event has left markers. We don't understand it yet, but we're going to keep working to try and understand it. You can use them to find what you're looking for. The answers, they're all here. The answers are in the light. This is a special announcement by the Emergency Measures Committee. Due to exceptional circumstances, radio and television in this area has been brought under the control of the EMC as per the Crisis Preparedness and Action Bill of 1982. Keep your radio and television on at all times. Stay indoors and avoid contact with other people. Do not attempt to telephone outside your local area. Do not panic and remain civil and calm. Stay tuned to this station for updates.
I'm trying to do my job. You two will be the only staff on site for this rotation. I'm just saying, if the main gate's power fails, then there's no way in or out of the observatory. That's why there are backup generators. Jesus, why the hell are we even discussing this? Just don't you come running to me if you get locked in. If we get locked in, we won't be able to come running to you, will we? You let us worry about the clever stuff and you can concentrate on sweeping up leaves and changing light bulbs. Happy? Now piss off. Ah, so. That was unnecessary. Just because you're angry with me doesn't mean you have to take it out on everyone else. Kate, can we just talk about this? No, mm. Stephen, I'm done. I just want to get out of this place, and tonight is our best chance of doing that. You prep the arrays, I'm heading up to Tower 6. Kate. I love you. You know that, right? Yeah, I know that. Come on, let's get started. Who's that? Hello? Kate, if you can hear this, you need to shut down the optical array. It's using the observatory as a conduit to reach us, and it started spreading its range beyond the valley. Kate, we can't afford to let it do that. It's getting stronger. I'm going to call Clive back, and I'm going to force him to order the strike. I just don't see what other choice we have. God knows Hello, if can you hear me? We need help. Who are you? Jesus, get off the floor! Get off the so hard on yourself. We've all had rejections. You haven't. <laughs> Come on. We'll look at the figures, tighten up the data, and resubmit. Your core idea is sound. You just got the number slightly wrong. Don't patronize me. I'm not patronizing you. I think you are a brilliant man, Dr. Appleton. Listen. I'm here, right? We're together, you and me. 
the alignment event tomorrow. It's yours, okay? You saw the opportunity, you ran the numbers. Even if they can't see it, I'm proud of you. Is that supposed to make me feel better? See you then. Look on the bright side, uh, around here. <laughs> You're a hero. Prodigal son returns, right? <laughs> I'm surprised they haven't erected a statue in your honor yet. <laughs> oh, you can laugh all you want. But I'll bet the parish council have a subcommittee working on that right now. <laughs> <laughs> for the first time that same rush of excitement <laughs> my hands are shaking Hello? Hello? Oh, Amanda, I thought you'd left town. We, we tried. We did try. But they've closed all the roads and you can't get through. And, and then Georgie and Ben said they had headaches. And then they started bleeding. And... It was horrible. They were so scared. So Neil turned the car around and, um, and you know, we saw the house was open and I know we shouldn't have, but we just came in to clean up the kids and, and then Neil and I started bleeding as well and it is all over my blouse. Everyone was so tired. It's all right, Amanda. Everything will be all right. Just try and calm down and tell me where Neil and the children are. They're upstairs. They were tired and Neil said they could take a nap in the bed and you know, we thought Barbara wouldn't mind as they're only children and 
and I was so tired, so Neil took them up. He took them upstairs to tuck them in. And? That was six hours ago. He never came back down. Just be too frightened to go and look. Why don't we go and look together? I can hold your hand if you like. Yeah. I think I could manage that, yes. Will you please help me? Of course I'll help you. Neil? Neil, are you there? I saw you doing that. Stay away from me. Don't come near me. This is people's property. You're scaring them. It's all over the village. It's got into everything. It's so fast. What are you talking about? It's travelling down the wires. Dear God, when you've lost your mind. Where is Kate? What have you done with her? Don't you understand? It's breaching the quarantine and adapting. Give me that bloody can. Hand it over, Appleton. No, get off. No, Sam, stop it. You weedy little shit. It's mine! Give me the can! Give me the can. Stop it. I need Grow it. up! Fuck. Oh, God, no. It's starting to manifest itself everywhere. Stephen, come back! Oh, Christ!
What about the station? That's shut down too. So there's no way in or out of the valley. They're obviously serious about this flu thing. Phil doesn't think it's flu at all. He said he's been practicing medicine for 30 years and he's seen plenty of flu and he said this doesn't feel right at all. Well, there's nothing of any use on the radio. Sorry I'm late, everyone. Have you started? Yes, but to be honest, there's not really that much to discuss. This quarantine is in place. There's roadblocks and everything. No one really seems to know anything, but people are definitely missing. More of them, too, not just a couple of old biddies. No one's seen the Sullivan since yesterday, and the house is just sitting there unlocked. I just got back from the farm. All of Frank's cows died in the night. He's devastated. Poor man. Hasn't he had enough for one year? First Mary and now this. Well, if no one's coming in to sort this mess out, we're just going to have to do it ourselves. Uh, Barbara, get Phil to do a stock take on medication. Jeremy, put the word out for people to congregate at the village hall. It's best we get everyone in one place for the time being. Good. I'll organise supplies. We'll have a lot of hungry mouths to feed. There's plenty at the depot, but well, let's start with what's here in the village. I'll draw up a rota. Charlie, you help me with that? Anything for you, Meg. I'll head out into the valley and scoop up the isolated families and check in with Lizzie Graves at the camp. Has anyone seen or heard anything from Stephen Appleton or his wife? I couldn't stop it. I couldn't do anything. Stop. Stop it. Calm down. Huh? Get back. It's in my head. Howard, wait. Ah! Oh. Ah! Father. Father, are you all right? It's my ankle. Oh, Jesus, Lord, I think it's broken. Uh, Howard, go and get help. There's no one left. No one's coming to help us. Please, Howard, fetch help. The light. They're in the light. I can see everyone in the light. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Help me.
electrical failures all over Tower 6. The light is flowing like liquid. Its sense of purpose is uh, overwhelming. There's something in... Steven? Steven, is that you? Meg, are you here? Here. I'm in the lounge. There are too many empty houses tonight. Most of the village has gone now. My head's killing me. Have you listened to the phones? No, I thought they were all dead. There's a strange kind of static now. I think I heard numbers in it. It sounded like the American woman. Kate? She's still alive. No one's seen her. I is Charlie back? Not yet, no. I'm sorry. That's all right, Father. Listen, you go on ahead. I'll just rest here a little longer. Sleep well.
It doesn't even reach the back fence, silly old bugger. Well, loaves and fishes we can manage, Father but Father Jeremy, might I have a word? Mrs. Boyles, of course. Meg, will you excuse us, please? Uh, see you back at Charlie's later. Cheerio, Wendy. I was speaking to Barbara. She said there were some irregularities about Mary's morphine. Good grief. Those are private medical records. Barbara should know better than to be discussing that sort of thing with you. If Dr. Wade finds out, he'll have no choice but to suspend her. Damn it, Wendy! Your brother is grieving. Mary was sick for a long time, and I'm glad it's over for her. Go and support Frank. He needs you now. God knows what you did. He sees. I just pray you can overlook Mary's weakness, but you, a man of the cloth, if you, have an issue you with... bring shame on this parish. If you have an issue with me, I suggest you write to the Bishop of the Diocese. I have parishioners to attend to. Excuse me. If you could just have a word with them, perhaps, yeah, they listen to you. Well, I really don't see what it has to do with me at all. The village looks up to you. I just think with what's been happening with Mr. Coles and uh, Mrs. Boughton and the others, that people need somewhere to talk, to feel safe. Perhaps they don't think that your church is somewhere they feel particularly safe. I don't need your forgiveness, Wendy. Or theirs. Whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. Romans chapter 2, verse 1. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. Matthew chapter 6, verse 1. It's not my judgment you should be worried about, Father. But fine. I'll talk to Barbara. Ask her to put a note up in the surgery about an extra service. Will that do? Yeah. 
was just some distortion of physics. I may not understand it yet, but it wasn't an accident. All of the clocks, what happened at Tower 6, it's just not random. There's an effort. An attempt to communicate. The magnetic field is causing disruptions to phone signals and the rest of the electrics. There are voices on the line. It's 4 a.m. Maybe everyone is up looking at the light show. You have to make a decision, Lizzie. Especially now. But I do love him, Father. I... 
I love them both. He's married. There are other people involved in this. Oh, I hardly think that anyone's in the position to claim the moral high ground, do you? Well, I take your point about Stephen and Robert, but I, I think Kate might see things differently. Do you? I mean, she's not screwing anyone else, pardon my French, but she spends all day and night locked up in that observatory. Stephen says they barely see each other. That's hardly a marriage, is it? Meg, come and have a look at this. Oh, I don't believe it. Charlie? Jeremy reckons someone had been raiding all the empty houses. He said a load of stuff had been taken. What's that? Oh, it looks like someone's been collecting their own supplies. Bastard. Well, we've got enough stock in the warehouse to keep the entire village going for months. We should get a truck. What, and go and get all of it now? Yeah, why not? It's Appleton. It's that bloody crackpot Stephen Appleton. I'm going to fucking do him. Sam, it's fine. We'd better get moving before the weather turns. You come in. We'll swing by the camp and get Rachel on the way back. from the main road. Not many people are moving around now. I was looking for Dr. Wade. Listen, Frank. I don't know what's happened, but your Stephen seems to think he's responsible. <sighs> I reckon he is. He said, uh, Kate's still up at the observatory, but the gates are locked. Look, Frank, there's going to be a rescue soon, I'm sure of it. They'll send planes or something. Well, they'll send planes, all right. This pattern of his, we're in the center of it. Which means if they intend to stop it, we're right in the firing line.
away, Amanda? Oh, just for a few days, yeah. First thing in the morning. I don't want the kids to catch this flu if it's going round. It's probably that father, Jeremy, spreading it around while he tries to bully everyone into donations for the summer fete. It seems very quiet in the village, actually, Wendy. Not much bullying to be done. Oh, father, I didn't know you were here. Clearly. Listen, I came up here to tell Amanda that we've had some vandalism in the village. Must be a teenage thing. Tagging, I think they call it. Someone's painting all over doors and things. Little vandals. Well, I'll tell Neil to make sure we're properly locked up when we go. A good man like my Eddie, God. And these thugs and yobs running around defacing property. He gave everything to his country, and look what he got in return. Nothing but an early death. He had a good life, Wendy. He had a short life. I look to my birds, father. Lives lived unencumbered, free and simple. That's as God meant things to be. Every computer in the observatory has set itself to 6.07 a.m. June 6th, 1984. I don't understand what that means. drawn this morning. That bloody dog kept me awake. And there was that thing in the sky. The radio says it was an electrical storm, but I don't know what it was. This morning, I found some dead birds in the garden. I'm sorry to hear that. I wonder if it might have had something to do with the atmospheric conditions. Why, Stephen will probably know. I'll give him a call in a bit. Wendy, I've popped around because we've had some incidents with some of the more elderly residents. Mrs. Bout has, well, vanished, for want of a better word. Wandered off somewhere, no doubt. 
I thought I'd best check and see you're all right. The council are talking about a flu epidemic. Yes, well, I'm not sure it's flu as such. But uh, no headaches, nosebleeds, no joint pains or digestive issues. Dr Wade, I'm as fit as a fiddle. Go and find some real sick people to look after. And if you see that son of mine, tell him that his mother's looking for him. <laughs>